What's up everybody, Justin from Inverse here to talk to you about Fallout 76. I was lucky enough to fly out to West Virginia, talk to some of the developers about the game, play it a bit early. Here are the 76 things I learned about Fallout 76. Let's get to it. Fallout 76 is the ninth game in the Fallout franchise and it is currently set to release on November 14th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Fallout 76 will be the first online multiplayer game from Bethesda Game Studios. It is a narrative prequel to the Fallout games, which is super exciting and definitely new for the series. There will be a beta available for the game for select people who pre-order. So if you pre-order it, make sure to ask them about the beta. You should get a code at the bottom of your seat. Make sure you get it. The beta will be first available for Xbox One users starting October 23rd, and then it'll be available for PS4 and PC users starting October 30th. The cool thing about the Fallout 76 beta, unlike other betas, is that it will actually carry over your progress once you get the actual game. So you don't have to worry about playing the first few quests over and over again. The base game will cost $60 at launch, and if you want to spend an extra $20, you can get the Tricentennial Edition, which is a pretty cool version that includes some extra skins and some new weapons. It's not necessary, but if you really like the game, I would recommend it. I already have it pre-ordered. There is also a $200 Power Armor Edition if you're feeling just wild. Wild. It's currently sold out everywhere, but you can get it for about $350 on eBay. It comes with a wearable power armor helmet. It looks ridiculous, but also amazing. So if you have the money, go wild. I could not afford the power armor helmet, but I did get this Vault Boy mask, which uh, we'll have to do. Okay, let's talk about the game itself. It takes place 25 years after the bombs dropped in 2077. Most of the games take place about 200 years, so this is significantly earlier. Vault 76 was supposed to open 20 years after the bombs dropped, so what happened in the five years when it was supposed to open and then it actually opened, we don't know yet, but I'm sure it'll be revealed. In Fallout 76, the map is known as Appalachia, which is clearly referring to the West Virginia area of America. Yeah, all that John Denver sort of stuff, everything he wrote songs about, that's what this game is about. Fallout 76 director Todd Howard actually said that the playable area of the map is about four times the size of the map in Fallout 4, which if you played it is huge. So this game is set to be a very large game. So real life West Virginia areas and lore play a significant part in the game. Some of the areas include Charleston, which is the capital of West Virginia, as well as West Virginia University, the New River Gorge Bridge, and the Greenbrier. All real life locations are all found in the map. Speaking of the Greenbrier, that is actually where I stayed when we went to West Virginia. It's awesome. It's this big historic resort in West Virginia, and it's actually built on top of a real-life fallout shelter that they built for uh, members of Congress and Senate to be flown there in the event of a nuclear strike like in the 1960s. And it was a secret for like 30 years, from 1962 until 1992. No one knew about this place. I'm sure it's going to be a part of the game. I went to the Greenbrier in the game. It looked just like it did in real life. I did not find the Fallout Shelter, but I think it's going to be in there. So keep an eye out for that. The developers designed all of the creatures and the plants and the items to be sort of a nice uh, tribute to West Virginia. They specifically said they didn't want to make any offensive stereotypes. They, quote, didn't make any mutant hillbillies. One of the more famous creatures in the game is called the Mothman. There's a whole museum, there's a whole part of the map dedicated to him. This is actually based on a real-life urban legend from the 1960s in West Virginia. Fallout 76, one of the cool new things about it is that there are now teams. You can play online with your friends or with random people. You can have up to four people in your team at any given time, so you no longer have to do quests solo. There is no friendly fire, so you don't have to worry about trolls shooting you while you're trying to be friendly with them. You can mute team members, which is very cool if people are being assholes. And you can also block other players on the map who aren't on your team so they can no longer see you if they are singling you out or something like that. So with people on your team, you can voice chat using a headset, but there are also about a dozen different emotes if you don't want to chat with them, but you still want to communicate with them. So there's a come here emote, there's a yes emote, there's a no emote, there's a trade emote, there's basically everything you need. You can mark things on the map. There are ways to communicate if you don't have a headset. Area chat will also be available upon release, which means that when you are walking through the map and you come across a different team that you are not um, in chat with, you can actually hear and talk to them if you get close enough to them, which is pretty cool. So if you want to trade, when you join a server, there will be a maximum of 24 people per server. So if there are about four people in each team, there will be about six teams on any given server. PvP combat will be available for the first time in any Fallout games, which is pretty dope. So how it works is when you engage a player in combat, 
you're going to do significantly reduced damage until they return fire. However, once they do re-engage you, PvP starts, normal damage happens, it's a full-on fight to the death. So yeah, if you kill somebody who does not re-engage with you, and you were just shooting them until they die, that is called murder, and you become a murderer, and there are many different things about being a murderer. For one, you have a bounty on your head that anyone can collect, even members of your own team, which is pretty wild. So if somebody next to you becomes a murderer, you can kill them and collect their bounty. Also, when you are a murderer, everyone sees you on the map. You have a big red token over your head, and you can't see anyone else. Normally, you can see everyone else on the map, including people that aren't on your team. But if you're a murderer, you see no one. If you are worried about PvP, don't worry. Until level 5, you are completely immune to it. No one can shoot you. You just go about your business. After level 5, there is a pacifist mode that you can enable. It means you don't participate in PvP. As you play the game, you will be leveling up. There is the special system that if you played any other Fallout game, it is basically the same. There are the seven stats that you can be upgrading every time you level up. You stop gaining special skill points after level 50, but you will still be gaining XP and gaining perk cards as you continue leveling up past that. Speaking of perk cards, perk cards are the new thing. Instead of just gaining perks, you get collections of perk packs, which are cards that you can attribute to different perk classes in order to get different perks. So a big thing about the game, if you've played any Fallout game or any, you know, Elder Scrolls game, is that there are no human NPCs in the entire game. Normally, that's how most of the story happens. You talk to, like, a random trader or a random person in a town. They give you a quest. There's none of that. The only humans are the other players. So this is very interesting because storytelling is totally different. So quests are mainly given to you through holotapes, which are like sort of the audio tapes that you listen to in the game, and through terminals. So there's going to be a lot of listening, and there's a lot of reading in this game. So if you're not into that, this might not be the game for you. But if you like that sort of more in-depth story, there's a ton of that. An interesting thing that we learned talking to the developers is that even though there are no human NPCs, there are actually the most number of unique voice actors that contributed to this game. There are the most actors that ever worked on a Fallout game, even though there are no human NPCs, which is very interesting. Just like any other Fallout game, the radio will be a big part of sort of creating the lore for the game. So the Appalachia radio is a big part of the game. The Appalachia radio will feature some classic Fallout songs, as well as some new sort of West Virginia oriented songs from local artists or from country artists of lore. But something that I asked the developers about and they gave me a definitive answer, there are no radio DJs in this game. That is pretty weird for a Fallout game. In terms of gameplay, there is still the popular VATS mode, but it's a little bit different in this game. Normally it slows or stops time so you can like focus on body parts to shoot. In this game, it does not slow or stop time, which makes sense because it's an online game and that would make gameplay terrible. So if you're not great at PvP or at first person shooters, this game might be a little bit more difficult for you. If you do miss the ability to target specific body parts in VATS mode, they do still have that, but it's actually a perk that you have to unlock. It's in the perception skill tree. Something about this game that is very unique is that the difficulty cannot be adjusted. It's an online game. So at any point, if you want to switch from easy mode to hard mode, it doesn't really exist. It's all going to be the same difficulty. And scrapping and junk which was popularized in Fallout 4, is a big part of this game, once again. If you didn't play Fallout 4, it basically means that any item can be scrapped and turn into little bits like screws, adhesive, little pieces of steel. All of that is very useful. It might sound like garbage, but in this game, it's actually incredibly important. Every item in the game can be scrapped, which is very useful, including your armor and your weapons. You might feel weird scrapping those things because they're very valuable, but the developers told us that if you scrap weapons you have the chance of unlocking schematics to modify those weapons in a cool way. The main downside to dying in this game is that you forfeit all of the junk that is currently in your inventory. So if you just spent eight hours collecting screws by scrapping bits of pens and telephone receivers and TVs and stuff like that, if you die, you lose all of it. If you store it through different stashes or in your camp or with different people in your team, it's fine, it stays there forever. Speaking of dying, when you die, you do have the option to be revived by a teammate if they're close enough. They have about 30 seconds to get to you before you officially die. Otherwise, you can just die, lose your junk, and then respawn at either a location that you found or on top of a nearby teammate, which is pretty cool. So just like other Fallout games, caps are the main form of currency. You're gonna be using it to trade, you're gonna be using it to do other things. 
you can trade with other players both in your team and other people that aren't in your team it's pretty cool actually you can barter you can name your own prices it doesn't just give you a value you can be like i want four thousand caps for this or two for this you can do whatever you can give stuff for free which i found pretty useful if they're somebody in my team who doesn't have a quest item i can just give it to them basically by selling it to them for zero caps there is also a new in-game currency being introduced in this game called atoms Atoms is basically a meta currency used to buy cosmetic items in the game. Think V-Bucks if you play Fortnite. So you unlock Atoms by completing challenges throughout the game. Challenges are a new thing in Fallout 76. They're actually very cool. They're going to have daily, weekly, even lifetime challenges as you play the game. Whatever it is, if you complete it, you get Atoms, which you can use to buy new outfits, change your look, stuff like that. It does not affect gameplay. It is not a pay-to-win kind of game. It is only a make-yourself-look-dope kind of game. Fast traveling is still the easiest way to get around the map. Like I said, the map is huge, so you're gonna wanna fast travel as often as you can, but fast traveling now costs caps. If you wanna fast travel back to Fallout 76 or any member of your team, totally free. If you wanna go to any other location, it does cost a small fee. Now, a big, exciting, and kind of scary thing about this game is that any player can now launch a nuke. And I'm not talking mini nukes, which if you play Fallout games, mini nukes are a thing, and they are devastating. But now there are just full-size nukes that any player can launch, which significantly changes the map and will basically kill everybody that's on it. It's pretty devastating. For several hours after you launch a nuke, the whole map changes. It's severely irradiated. You basically can't walk out into it unless you have some dope power armor or a hazmat suit or something. But... The developer said the best loot and the best schematics and the best armor and weapons are available in this newly nuked wasteland. The Pit Boy is still your main organizational method in Fallout 76. All of your armor and your stats and your weapons and your stim packs and everything like that will be available in your Pit Boy. But a cool new thing is called the Quick Boy, which is something you can access in your controller. It's basically a miniaturized simple version of the pit boy that you can bring up on your screen and it doesn't block the whole screen so you can still look at everything that's going on so if you're in the middle of pvp you don't have to worry about getting shot while you have this giant pit boy in your face another cool thing about this game is the camp system which stands for the construction and assembly mobile platform basically every player has one and at any point they can drop down their camp and build a small settlement anywhere on the map it's pretty sweet other team members can um, edit your camp so basically, if you start building a tower over here, they can build a bridge over here, and then you can build some turrets over here. When you log off, your camp is saved, and then when you get dropped back into a different server, it'll be placed in the exact same spot on the off chance that somebody has built a camp in the exact spot that you had built. It'll be saved as a blueprint, and then you can drop it somewhere else. If you were scared, don't worry. The Fat Man is back. The mini nuke launching Fat Man will definitely be in this game. Developers gave us the thumbs up. A new part about this game that's actually very exciting is survival is a big part of the game. It's no longer just worrying about your health and your radiation. There are two new bars you have to worry about, which is your hunger and your thirst. So basically food no longer really gives you HP. It just satiates your hunger. And water doesn't really give you HP either. It's just to quench your thirst. When we asked the developers about other vaults that you might find as you explore Appalachia, one of the developers said, yes, there are other vaults, and then the other one agreed that there are other vaults, and the other one said, no comment, we can't talk about that yet. So we don't exactly know what's going to happen with the other vaults. I don't think that they're going to be open yet because Vault 76 is, in Fallout lore, the first one to open, but they might open later down the road as time goes on, so who knows. The developers are going to release downloadable content after the release. They said that most of the content will be based on what the players want. They have some ideas of what they're going to be releasing, but ultimately all of the patches and the DLCs will be in response to how the game goes, what the feedback is, and what the players want, which is pretty dope. At this time, there will not be crossplay between platforms for Fallout 76. Seasonal events such as holiday, like a Christmas event or a Halloween event or something like that, is on the developer's radar. They currently don't have anything planned, but they said they've thought about all possibilities in terms of time-based challenges and events. And you've probably seen it if you've watched any gameplay videos so far, but there is a new camera mode offered in Fallout 76. So yes, you can take selfies throughout the game, and those things will appear in your loading screens. It's pretty sweet, it's pretty cute, totally unnecessary, but I love it. And that's it. Those are 76 plus things that I learned about Fallout 76 after having flown to West Virginia, played the game for a couple hours, talked to the developers, ate some chicken and some chowder. It was great. I'm really excited about it. You should be too. That was a lot, but there's still probably more to learn. What do you guys want to know about? 
comment below. Let us know what you guys are thinking about. If you're excited about the game, make sure to subscribe. Smash that like for more video game love. Later!